Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Okay. The, I will talk about the fire safety and evacuation in tall buildings. Uh, after my, my presentation, uh, Professor Brian Meacham will talk the very, uh, the very related topic. So then we too uh, con uh, con continuously uh, give you uh, the lectures. And then we have a answer, question and answer time. This is a high-rise building in the west in Shinjuku Station. It's uh, one of very nice uh, high-rise building area in Tokyo. In the 1970s, there are some new ones, but uh, mostly the, during the 1970s, this uh, high-rise building was uh, <coughs> built in Tokyo. We, of course, we have more than uh, much more new highlights building in the other places, but this is one of very uh, <clears throat> symbolic area of highlights buildings in in Japan. I will talk about the two things first: uh, the past example of highlights building fires. As I was introduced by the facilitator in, in the morning, I graduated from Kyoto, a <clears throat> the Graduate School of Architectural Engineering in Kyoto University uh, in 1972. And I directly entered the master course of the same uh, course. When Andros Tall building fire occurred. And uh, my laboratory it, uh, already started the fire safety research uh, even that time. So I really, I was really involved in the study and the investigation uh, to learn from this fire. Uh, it's, I don't need to explain much about this fire because you are Brazilian, you know much more than I know. But uh, <clears throat> it's a very shocking fire to us. And uh, uh, as a fire, as a second sec <clears throat> uh, section, as the fire was co covered live on television broadcast, the scenes of people throwing themselves from the windows shook the world, uh, which is leading to the first security discussions in buildings. Then next year, as you uh, the next next year, as you know, Joelma building fire. It's much more <coughs> uh, se severe fire and uh, resulting in the. 179 deaths and 300 people injured. Because flammable materials had been used to furnish the interior, the entire building was <clears throat> engulfed in flames within 20 minutes. Within 20 minutes. Joanna Fire remained the third world skyscraper, a worst skyscraper fire ever in terms of the death toll even after 9-11 event in 2001. The Joeluma fire became a landmark case that led to changes in fire safety regulation, not only in Brazil, but all over the world. For instance, Los Angeles enacted regulation 10, which mandated all new buildings taller than 75 feet to have a rooftop helicopter pad for emergency fire evacuation. I took this picture the, yesterday when I, we were walking along the San Paulo, a Paulista Street. So, as you know, the highlights building, which, which uh, lacked some. Uh, <clears throat> 
one more exit stairs should have some uh, bridge between the buildings like this. And also the, in the light picture, uh, light uh, building named the Asahi building uh, should have the exterior uh, exit in addition to the uh, existing stairs. So it is a typical scene after the <coughs> regulation was changed uh, <coughs> after the Jerome fire, building fire. The, at the same time in Japan, when I was a student in the master course in the university which, is, which was doing the fire safety, there was a fire. At the, also very deadly fire, eight, 118 people died in the fire, only the seven-story Senich department store building. The fire broke out at 22.27 <coughs> in the night in the sales floor, the women's dress <coughs> on the third floor under the renovation work due to unspecified cause. And the smoke very quickly spread out to the entire building uh, through the vertical shaft upstairs and the elevators. Even it's in the, in the night, on the seventh floor, there was a nightclub on operation where most of victims were found. 118 died. And again, the very similar, to, similar period to the Brazil, the in 1973, we have another deadly fire. Uh, Taiyo Department fire in Kumamoto City in Kyushu. In this fire, 103 people die in the 13 stories department store again. In the daytime, the fire broke out the stairs at the landing between the second floor and third floor and spread from the third floor to the top floor, I think again within the <clears throat> less than one hour. And the 103 people of shoppers, working staff and the construction workers and the like were killed. The fire protection systems such as sprinklers were out of action in course of construction work which amplified the damage. These two fires coincidentally occurred as, <coughs> as the two high-rise fire in Brazil also occurred. <coughs> in 19, uh, 1980s, th there was a, uh, other, uh, there was a, Another highlights fire in U.S., which is called the first interstate bank building fire in 1988 in Los Angeles. Uh, as, a as a member of Japanese government investigation team, I went to the site and I entered the, inside the building to, to look at the, the damage. And uh, we made a report about the, how fire spread out and how people escaped. Uh, unfortunately, it's written in Japanese. <clears throat> and uh, I want to show, it, it's, this fire gave us the, give us the very good imp, uh, lessons for the fire safety in tall buildings. First, I want to show you the video movie which was made by the Los Angeles City Fire Department. I don't know the address, I'm just down the street from it. I'm calling from another building. You're calling from 600 Wilshire? Yes, I am. You know where the intersection or the address is? Uh, it's on Hope and Wilshire Boulevard. Okay, so it's we're on our way. pretty good fire, too, it's up on the top floor. Okay. The first calls came in at 10.37 p.m., and within a minute, several units were rolling. Task Force 9, Task Force 10, Engine 3, Squad 4, 
Battalion 1, respond to the structure fire at the intersection of Wilshire and Hope. That's Hope and Wilshire. OCD from Battalion 1 on the scene, uh, 624 West Wilshire. We're, we're, we have fire showing from several windows. The first units arrived on the scene in four minutes to join a battle that would last three hours and 42 minutes from start to finish. The fight and the fire escalated quickly. I'm going to need five additional task forces, five additional engines, five, 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 five chief officers. We have a fire on looks like the 11th floor, 11th floor, fully involved. Uh, we have people on the roof uh, that are need of rescue. Uh, we want our first helicopter to assess that situation and uh, get those people off the roof. It would turn out to be the 12th floor, but there was no underestimating the size and potential of this fire. Now we smoked up, went up to the 13th yeah, yeah. floor. Got a high -rise fire going. Two floor okay, was now in now. Okay. Deputy Chief Don Anthony was called in from his home to direct the fight as incident commander. Wilshire IC in his radio communications with Central Dispatch, OCD. When I came over the Coinga Pass from the San Fernando Valley, down towards Coinga Boulevard, I could in fact see the fire in the building from uh, there, which was more than eight miles away, and I realized that this, and listening to the radio messages coming in, that this probably was the most significant high-rise fire that we had had in the city. It was in fact the tallest building in the city, the 62-story First Interstate Bank, and the size of the fire would continue to grow. Wilshire, I see from OCD, the company that you have assigned at this time is Task Force 26, Engine 17, Engine 13. As soon as the first arriving officer made his call for the additional resources, the department puts into operation automatic dispatches of other resources. We had far more resources already moving than just the engines and the trucks that were called for the task forces by the on-scene fire commander. I think uh, all of the senses tune up. I think that people, uh, the adrenaline starts to flow. We react in emergencies, and we react better in emergencies. And uh, one like this, everything just comes into play and starts uh, to flow, and people just really get into doing those types of things that they're trained the to do. And yourself, Battalion 1. It's a, At 2322, 45 minutes after the first call, this was Wilshire IC's assessment. Chief Anthony, go. It looks like it's on the 12th and 13th floors, fairly well involved. Got a call of uh, pretty much at the, 10th, uh, the 12th floor. We don't have the 13th yet. However, we do have water moving on to the 13th floor. And here's how the battle was staged. From the fire site, this is how we set up our logistics for this incident. Came out here so, to base, which was approximately a block and a half to two blocks, directly are, south of the fire, the, where all the apparatus the came into before they went into the fire. Moving then a little bit the north, action. a little closer towards the fire. And uh, the, this is our uh, air filling, where air emergency filling air filled all of the air cylinders being used by firefighters the on the bomb. fire. Directly across the street is the command you know, post the command where post. the incident it's was incident managed. Command post. On uh, Wilshire was our medical group set up to treat the it's patients medical, and uh, firefighters and civilians uh, being injured in this fire. Moving then up towards the fire building, directly north of the building was the fire department and inlets the to augment the water uh, system of the building. The we uh, supplied water in here through six pumps. A number of the hose Send lines from the pumps were cut through by the falling glass pipes. out of the building and had to be replaced but the a glass number of times. Is fallen down and they cut the hose and the because of the debris, several the hoses are damaged the by the falling the glasses. And the entering from the ground floor is very dangerous, so they decided to enter the building through the tunnel. The inside is uh, entirely bound down from 12th uh, floor to the 15th floor. So the 16th floor are heavily damaged and the 17th floor are just a little damaged.
But finally, they decided to take some action. So, the now you can see the hose, this water discharge by hose. They entered through the tunnel in the building and they take stairs, not elevated stairs, up to the not fire floor. They climb up to the two floors up, one floor and the two floors up the fire floors. So then it's a 16 floor and the 70 floor. Firefighters uh, was deployed on the edge of the building. This is the window, and edge of the window. And take a hose, and the flame is not from inside, the flame from outside, through the window. They waiting for the flame come and water discharge from the room. That was really successful. 74, there are almost no damage. 64 is halfly damaged, but uh, the strategy they took is hose lines arranged along the window edge. Okay, I finished the uh, movie. On the fire floor, on the 12th floor, fire started by the, some uh, malfunction of a PC, and uh, it, it, it is thought the fire cause is in the, uh, from the PC, and uh, this uh, <coughs> Uh, spread out through the floor. However, the important thing is uh, fire zoning, compartment, compartmentation in the center core is a very uh, protective. Two hours uh, fire rating protect center core. So almost no damage inside the center core. That's the most important thing for high-rise building. So the firefighters, they don't use, they, they, of course, there are naturally the firefighters lift, but at that time, before the 2008 in US building code, even though there are fire lift, I, I think in Brazil also they, you have a fire, but it is not safe from a fire. Fire and the smoke, the same thing. They can manipulate fire <coughs> elevator cargo from inside, but only that thing, uh, what they can do is only that kind of self-control operation, but no safe. Then the firefighters use the stairs inside, the very safe stairs to access to the above one floor, two floor up from the fire flow. So then they can dip, uh, reach the 16, 17 floors and waiting fire comes. That is the main reason to stop the fire spread. I don't, I don't uh, go, in, in, uh, go in detail about, but uh, <coughs> So maybe I, I push good better. This is a route of evacuation, but uh, it's too uh, <coughs> too much in details. Okay. So I skip this slide. If you we have a time in discussion time, so we can explain the. One of the reasons of a fire spread from the ejected flame in the exterior wall is uh, they have a very, very small size spandrel between the floors. 
So then the flame easily goes up, ignite to the upper floors. This really happens in the first interstate bank building. What is a spandle and for what purpose? The left side, left <laughs> picture showed the, I think uh, the many of Brazil, uh, the high rise building, building in Brazil has a similar configuration. You have no, some building may have a spandle, but many building has not spandle, only glass between floors. So what happened in that kind of building? So then easily glass was broken and the frame, ejected frame goes to the inside. But if you have a spandle like this, fire is uh, some, uh, <coughs> some uh, interfere to enter the <coughs> uh, inside. This is the purpose of a spandle. And in Japan, what I heard from uh, Rosalia, uh, now you have uh, 120 centimeters or more spandle in the high rise building. So this is the purpose of that, uh, to, to stop the fire spread uh, from window. Then, now, there is another issue, uh, imagine, in, especially in the East Asia and the uh, Middle East. The frequent occurrence of fire causing large loss of life and the property along with the increasing number of high-rise fire in Asia. These issues are relating to the use of sandwich panels and the exterior wall insulation. This is a newly emerging fire risk of high-rise buildings all over the world now, including Grenfell uh, apartment fire in UK London. So China, 2009, after the Beijing Olympic game, they had a very serious fire, a high rise fire, in China TBCC uh, building. But this, well, this news was not so released to the world because the Japan, Chinese government want to uh, uh, confine this news to the world, but uh, only Japanese want TV made a news, so I showed that one. This is exterior fire. Can you imagine? It's not explosion, it's a fire. It's not explosion, it's a fire. Aluminum sandwich panel on the exterior wall was ignited and start a very rapid upward fire spread. That's a very surprising scene. Even the reporter is uh, standing 100 meters away from the fire scene, but still feel very hot. Sorry in Japanese, but you can see the picture. Even very excellent fire brigade in Brazil cannot control this fire. Once it occurs, no, no way. Within 30, 30 minutes, a half hour, the fire, entire building was involved in the fire.
because this fire uh, broke out uh, before the open. So then the, the on, there was only one big uh, fire death uh, in the firefight, uh, firefighters. There's, there are some workers, construction workers inside, but uh, they are safe. This is the one good luck. Oh, this is a CCTV fire. And also, in 2011, there was another big fire occurred in the Five Star Hotel. Five Star, five Star Hotel, the highest in the northeast region in China, Xinyang, Xinyang. Very high class hotel was totally burned down like this. Very similar scene as the CCTV fire. It's also the exterior wall was uh, burning and the fire spread is through the external wall. Maybe it's a uh, insulation material or the sandwich panel on the wall. This, uh, this is not the CCTV, this is the Xinyang Five Star Hotel. This news is also not released to the worldwide, but someone knows. Sandwich panel and its issues from, from the viewpoint of fire safety. Also, a sandwich panel is deemed to be fire related after the designated fire test and the small box test in the color, in cone color limiters. So it may start glow and spread very fast once the interior filling is ignited. Sandwich means the some materials for insulation like uh, uh, uretan. Written, written, which is a very combustible, but uh, it's a uh, fire retardant, uh, they say the fire retardant uh, written is sandwiched with the aluminum or a zinc slim panel. So it looks like a, uh, <clears throat> uh, steel or aluminum panel. But in, even it's a very thing that the inside is a combustible materials. In the small box test, fire <coughs> uh, combust, combustion performance test, it's passed and it's ranked, it's rated as uh, in combustible materials. However, as you witnessed already, if they used for the external materials for the high rise building. And once it got ignition, it, it is ignited, the fire is very progressively spread up to the, the top within a very short time by these external materials. Up to the first interstate bank building fire, the the fire, of course, uh, fire spread again from window to window, but it takes about 20 minutes by each. 20 minutes by each floor, one floor up. But in this case, even though the 30 stories floor is high as building, it takes only 30 minutes from the bottom to the top floor. Fire rate cannot take any action to stop the fire. But if in the, in the first state bank building fire, you can do something through that uh, inside the stairs, and uh, we can wait for the up frame, up, upward fire spread on the non-fire <coughs> uh, non floors. But in this case, 
we have no way to stop. That's the more serious situation now we are facing. So Grenfell Tower, uh, this fire will be uh, told by uh, Mitchum, uh, Brian Mitchum, Professor Brian Mitchum. So I uh, skip this uh, uh, explanation. So then I move to the second part. My second uh, topic is relating to the study of use of elevators in fire evacuation in the high-rise building. Again, this one. First, I'd like to describe the issues and fire protection uh, strategy. A, measures to confine a fire within the floor that a fire started and to prevent fire spread to upper and lower floors. Second, measures to prevent smoke diffusion by fire to upper and the floor, uh, lower floors. Third, plan for, plan for prompt and safe evacuation in the high-rise building. Fourth, uh, facilities for prompt access for firefighters to upper floors. Uh, fifth, issues regarding the evacuation by elevators. While Elevators were used in many cases for evacuation in the, in the past. Six measures of evacuation for disaster brunal people, such as in a aged and disabled people, etc. I will talk about the issues of this uh, in the last two topic, uh, last two items. In many past fires in the Hylas building, not a few people used elevators for their evacuation. Population of aged people has been rapidly increasing. Accessibility of disabled people has been improved. So, so many disabled people and the handicapped wheelchair users now in the upper floors, uh, especially in the public building, the cinema building. Potential demand of elevator use in evacuation has been growing recently, especially after the World Trade Center's collapse in September 11th. Requirement and features of fire protection to a tall building by regulation in Japan, such as building codes and the fire codes. Requirements and the features of special egress stairs in Japan, all stairs that connect to the 15th and the higher floors are required to be special egress stairs. It should connect directly to the ground floor. It should be compartmentalized with fire-related walls. It should be attached with the best view with small control system in front of the entrance door of the stairs. Mainly used for evacuation of occupants, but after evacuation completed, it may be used by fire brigades. Requirement and features of emergency elevators in Japan. Building with 31 meter higher, height or higher are required to be installed with emergency elevator from 1970. It's very important. In Japan, even from 1970, the period, all high-rise building which exceeds 31 meters has firefighters lift, which is very safe from fire and smoke and supported by uh, generators, emergency generators. So Japanese firefighters can use elevators for high-rise building even from 1970s. But the U.S., they changed the building code to high-rise high building to have, should have the really real fire lift in the building, uh, uh, IBC building code from 2008. Uh, the emergency elevator is required uh, 
required number of emergency elevators in, uh, is depending on the maximum floor area among floors over 31 meters height. Uh, within uh, 1,500 square meters one, over 1,500 square meters uh, one by uh, 3,000 square, square meters. Compartmentation with fire rated wall is required along the elevator shaft. Small control system is required in the lobby. Compartmentation with fire resistant door is required in the lobby and mainly used for, for rescue and firefighting by fire brigades. But now uh, the discussion has started uh, for allowing the disabled people to use the, this firefighter's lift before firefighter's action. And then requirement and features of fire protection systems in Japan, which was uh, required by the fire service law. Buildings that have 11 and higher floors are required to be installed with sprinkler system. Buildings that have four and higher floors are required to be installed with indoor fire hydrants. Buildings that have fire and higher floors together with the 6,000 square meters in the total floor area are required to be installed with standard pipe. Risers in the UK. Buildings that have seven and higher floors are required to be installed with, uh, this is the same thing, sorry. Uh, ah, regardless of the size of the building, regardless of the <coughs> floor area. And many other sy systems according to the circumstances. Then the, the question in this topic here are, if occupants try to use elevators in evacuation, how can the effectiveness of it be realized? Which is more preferable between the evacuation by elevators and by stairs, according to the condition? Simplified model to evaluate evacuation time by elevators, uh, we, we uh, developed the feasibility study to examine the issues of elevator use in evacuation. Purpose of case study is the comparison between the evacuation time by elevators and the, by egress stairs. Comparison of transportation efficiency between uh, two operational model modes of emergency use elevators. The third is comparison of efficiency between the evacuation by emergency elevators and the evacuation by eagle stairs as a function of the ratio of elevator use. Our model of elevator service operation for evacuation can handle the multiple elevators, uh, can change the performance of elevators independently, speed, capacity, and priority of stop floors. Uh, this high rise building is uh, the target in the case study. It's, uh, this building is located in the Shinjuku area, about 20, 24, 24 stories high rise. And this is a uh, plan and section. So there's two. Uh, special egress stairs on both, on both end, and attached to the egress stairs, uh, there is a emergency elevators. And there is a, a very safe best view. You can see the office room and the corridor, and to enter the uh, stair, you have to open the door again. So you have to open the twice doors and then you can reach the stairs and the, you can you reach the emergency elevators. But in the, uh, yes. This is the usual common elevators. This is the four firefighters. But it's usually open, this is usually closed.
and these are usually elevated. Plenaries is for case studies. A fire occurs on the bottom floor in floors for one of the each bank. In the bank where a fire occurs, only a fire smoke proof emergency use elevator and or fire smoke proof egress stairs are available for evacuation. We don't use uh, common elevators in this, in, this case, in this case study. The occupants on the fire floor are assumed to move down by stairs to the floor just below the fire floor. No influence by fire and smoke is considered during the evacuation as the transportation efficiency is the main ta target of uh, concerns in this uh, case study. I skip this, skip this. And the floor configuration elevator I already took. So in the case study, I compare the evacuation by this emergency elevators and the uh, emergency egress stairs from these floors, 14 first floor to 53 first. We neglect other floors because I uh, simply compare that uh, the occupant on the dangerous zone, the fire floor is 41st floor, so then the occupants above the fire floor should leave uh, uh, firstly. This is the result. So you can see uh, we need an explanation. D bank, D bank is the case for case study. If you use emergency elevator, two, there is two elevators uh, in, on each floor. If we use uh, the two emergency elevators, it will take 6,000 seconds for total evacuation. But if we use the, uh, the eagle stairs, it can be, uh, no, no, no. The bottom one, evacuation by stairs for D bank. If we used the, uh, the eagle, special eagle stairs, two eagle stairs, 6,000 is, <coughs> reduced to be the 1,700 seconds, almost one-fourth. And uh, even though all occupants in the whole building, if they use the evacuation stairs, it takes about 4,000 seconds, even shorter than only people on the upper floor, 41 to 53, for us, people use the emergency elevators case. All occupants, if they take the stair stairs, it's so much shorter than this one. So many people, most many people think elevator is faster than the going down through the stairs. And many people believe 50 stories walk down is very hard to walk. But if you try once, at least once, take stairs from 50 stories to ground floor, not so much tough. If you walk up, go up by stairs, it's very tough, of course. Heart is beating very quickly, but uh, Going down is very close to going horizontally. You should try once. So I really did it in some training, uh, the evacuation drill in the high-rise building. At that time, I have some damage in my heart. So I tried to join that young people, the group, and just follow the, this group. The natural speed dumps uh, uh, downward <coughs> through the stairs. I have no problem to catch up with them. 
So the question is, which is faster to use the elevators and stairs? And the elevator is, of course, faster than the walk down, but the capacity of the cargo is one time is very limited. Only the 15 people are allowed to get in. And sometimes uh, some confliction between the inside and the outside. Every stop floor. It takes a much longer time. So the waiting time is most crucial, most in the elevator use. So then if you use the stairs, it's much easier and faster. That's my uh, comment from this study. So then I also the, finally uh, stop. This is the final uh, slide of my presentation. So someone has the idea to come the, the best combination of use of elevator and the stairs. I agree. So then I, uh, <laughs> I studied the uh, evacuation time as a function of elevator use. Uh, so the, the, the bottom <coughs> uh, horizontal axis stands for the elevator use ratio in, among the total occupants from 0% to the 100%. So let Red, <coughs> red line stands for the evacuation time by elevator, and the blue markers line stand for the evacuation time by egress stairs. So the ma this crossing point is just best combination. The same time, both has same time. So if the use of elevator ratio is uh, about 16, 17 percent is the best combination to use the emergency elevators. And other 8, 85 percent of occupants uh, better use, should better use the stairs. So then everyone is happy. So I really recommend in the last, the only disabled people, aged people, and the pregnant ladies and the some small kids must be prioritized to use emergency elevators, not common people for not complete. Common people are able to body people. Must use the ex uh, exit stairs. For these vulnerable population, if common people want to use emergency elevators as uh, likely as the Burma people, so there might be very chaos and the confliction among the people. So able-bodied people and the <coughs> common uh, usual bodied people used uh, uh, desire to use the egress and uh, some designated people who are vulnerable in work down, especially in walk down, must be prioritized to use the emergency elevators. That's my uh, concluding remarks. So again, if all occupants in each bank try to use uh, emergency elevators, it takes much longer time than the case of evacuation by regular elevators as well as the case of evacuation by egress stairs. On the other hand, evacuation time by two eager stairs is quite semi, uh, similar to that by eight, eight regular elevators in each bank, if it can be used. As evacuation by eager stairs is much safer than the evacuation by regular elevators, so it is recommended that most of general people should better use fire and smoke proof eager stairs, except the people who have difficulty to use the stairs in their evacuation. The evacuation completion time by emergency use elevators is increasing at a great rate in proportion to the elevator use ratio 
among the occupants. To compare with evacuation by egress stairs, the advantage of elevators use in terms of transportation efficiency appears in certain limited uh, conditions such as 25, I think it's uh, much smaller, 20% or less of elevator use ratio among the occupants. If elevator use group can be designated only for the small part of occupants, such as disabled people, it will be effective to use elevators in evacuation for those people. However, for other general people, it would be better to use stairs for their evacuation in most cases, as well as to let evacuation of this peop disabled people by elevator more effective. This, this is the most important. But in the now, the, the some symposium relating to the human behavior in fire, majority of the researchers' opinion is the, uh, uh, evacuation elevators uh, must be used for the high-rise building. But even evacuation elevators, uh, the, the, there's no, uh, how to say, the, the priority, priority for the people, among the people. Because we, we, cannot, we cannot control the people's uh, decision to use the elevators. But that's a uh, continuous discussion in, the, in, this, in this topic. Additional comments, and uh, there is the possible difficult situation such as uh, the conflict among the occupants inside and outside elevators uh, in conjunction with the priority of elevator use in evacuation. Once an elevator door is opened, uh, it may be not smoothly closed as assumed, and it would take much longer time than expected in the calculations. The question here is how can we control this kind of human behavioral problem in emergencies? This must be another key issue to be addressed in discussion. Thank you.